Hi, welcome to K.Shay. One of my very favorite memories growing up was making homemade Halloween decorations with my family. We would create crazy scenes of Halloween in our windows with construction paper. Now, as an adult, I wanna take that concept and maybe elevate it a little bit. I think I wanna make some pumpkins that will be thin enough to put in my windows, but durable enough to last year after year. So let's make some pumpkins. All right, for this project, we're gonna need some scrap cardboard, some cloth, a glue gun, glue sticks, paint brushes, and some scissors. Let's talk about materials real quick. Um, if you don't craft a lot, and this sounds like a good idea, you might be tempted to rush out and get a bunch of stuff, but I'm gonna tell you through my own experience where to get things the cheapest. So in my experience, if you need glue sticks, you get them from either Amazon or Walmart, and that's it. You don't go to a craft store. If you go to Michael's and try to pat, buy a pack of 100 tiny glue sticks, it's gonna cost you $15. This pack that I got from Walmart was like $5. So I could have got 300 glue sticks for the price that I would have gotten at Michael's. All right, let's talk about glue guns. So this is my glue gun. I got it off, I got it off of Amazon for, I think it was like $7. Um, it works amazing. It's dual temperature and I always keep it on the lower temperature because I burn myself a lot because I always touch things because I don't know why. And just like my glue gun, I use paint all the time. I actually had these four colors of paint, so it was easy for me. But if you're going out to buy paint for like this specific project, I would suggest getting this size. Again, don't buy your paint at a craft store. This is acrylic paint that I got at a Walmart. This bottle is 50 cents. So don't feel pressure if you want to start crafting more to go to fancy craft stores. Just a thought, you know. Well, let's get back to making some pumpkins. Okay, so you're just gonna take your scrap of cardboard and I'm gonna freehand draw this pumpkin on here. But if you're not comfortable doing that, the best way to go is to search for a cartoon pumpkin image online because a nice artist has already translated it into 2D for you. Print that out, cut it out, and then use it basically as like a stencil. Or you could spend some time freehanding one pumpkin onto some cardboard and then using that as a stencil. And it's okay if your pumpkin comes out looking like an apple initially. Pumpkins look crazy, they come in all different shapes and sizes, so it's totally okay. Once you add some ridges and some color to it, it's gonna look great. Also, I just noticed that I drew this directly in the center and wasted a bunch of cardboard on the side, but that's okay too. So we're gonna cut it out. Cutting out using a box cutter, just carefully. You can also use scissors, exacto knives, whatever. I just use box cutter because it's the easiest for me. All right, so this orange fabric is something I already had. It was used for another project that went horrible. So I'm gonna repurpose it into something beautiful. So I'm gonna just cut a basic shape for the fabric, making sure to leave enough on the edges that I can glue it onto the cardboard. All right, so we're just gonna lay down a little stream of glue and pro tip um, you can use the back of a sharpie or a pen to help you glue things on because i do tend to burn my hand a lot so i do try to remember to use the end of a utensil when i glue things to edges that maybe are a little bit too thin to comfortably use with your hand but that's okay all right so we're going to now score the fabric to cut out the stem I'm again going to do this with the box cutter, because you, but you can just go for scissors. And now I'm going to go for scissors. We have the stem cut out. I'm going to glue down that little seam that we created so it doesn't get crazy when we're painting. Now I'm going to add back in the ridges. You can already tell it's starting to look more like a pumpkin. These are just colors that I already had. Don't worry about getting things that are glossy. I just had glossy on hand, but it's not gonna do anything specifically for this project. Okay, so the first step is to add in a base shadow or a median shadow. So it's like the shadow in between the two colors. It's not the darkest and it's not the lightest. Um, and I'm just gonna paint that on one side of my Sharpie for every single one of these ridges. So pick one side and then lay down a pretty heavy line and don't make it uniform. Remember, nature is not uniform, like shadows will not be uniform on a pumpkin because there's lots of texture on a pumpkin. And you can see on the bottom, I'm gonna add a little extra because 
it's a pumpkin, it's round, it's gonna have an extra shadow on the bottom. And once that's done, we're gonna go back in with our absolute shadow, with just a tiny amount of black on our paintbrushes. And we're gonna just do a real thin line right where that Sharpie is. Now, if these are just going in your kitchen, you wanna make this black line very, very thin. My pumpkins are going in an upper floor window, so they won't be very visible from the street. So I'm gonna do a much harsher black line and it will read better from further. But if it's just in your kitchen, it's gonna look kind of weird that close up, but. So it just depends on what you need. But you can see here, my lines are not perfect. They're not uniformed and they're pretty sloppy and that's totally okay. So now we're gonna sponge on the highlights and the texture. These sponges I got in the Walmart craft aisle for like three bucks and I've had them for years. They've gotten lots of abuse, but they've done well. So you wanna put a little bit of paint on the surface and then you wanna use a separate surface to sort of help spread that paint out. You wanna aggressively lay down some color. You don't wanna worry about getting the color onto your lines. That's totally fine. Um, you wanna just kinda of go in with the orange and with the white at the same time and you're just adding some nice texture to your pumpkin and adding some visual interest. Yeah, as you can see, I'm getting paint all over the lines and it looks fine. Now I'm just going back in now I'm gonna take my paintbrush, I'm gonna add some color to the stem, just using the same brown that I used for the base shadow. Just giving it full coverage there. And now I'm gonna just take my paintbrush and quickly sort of wet blend, or maybe I went a little too crazy with my sponges, just to add in some more of that solidness of the shadow, but not too much. I'm gonna take a small amount of black paint on the end of my brush and paint in some vertical lines, no blending, just some like shadows where like a woody stem would have them. Some real quick, super quick. It took me less than 25 seconds. And you can see up close, these things look kind of crazy and a mess, but they definitely from afar read as pumpkin. So there you have it. Uh, it only took me around two hours to make all five of these pumpkins. It was super fun. It's very relaxing to just spend the day <laughs> making pumpkins. Um, if you are thinking about trying this project yourself, I would highly suggest just remembering three things. Pumpkins are essentially just, just shape, stem, and ridges and color doesn't really matter. If you don't wanna spend money on orange fabric, you can get any fabric you like, uh, pattern, non-pattern, and this essentially will work the exactly the same way. And if you don't wanna spend money on fabric at all, I would highly suggest going through your closet and seeing if there's any clothes that you'd be okay giving over to crafts and then making some highly custom pumpkins that 100% reflect you. And you know, as long as you think about the shape of the cardboard that you put it on, you know, pumpkins are round, but they're not perfectly round. So you want to imagine a circle and squish it or squish it or squish it. And then just put a stem on it and make sure it has some ridges and you have a pumpkin. The best part about this project is that once Halloween is over, I can take some green felt and cut out some leaves and some vine sprints, tape them on there, and now I have Thanksgiving decorations. And then once that's done, I can... And they're done, they're ready for storage. And they're flat, so they don't take up hardly any room. And if you enjoyed watching, please leave a like. 
Uh, if you found this at all informative and would like to see more, please subscribe and I will see you around. Till next time. Thank you.